In this lesson, we will consider the concept of unregistered land. Now, going into this topic, it must be noted that the ultimate aim of legislation within the UK is to register all lands. As you might imagine, unregistered lands create certain problems within the infrastructure of the UK as well, both for conveyancing by certain owners to the others as well as in registry purposes. So, due to this fact, the ultimate aim has always been to register unregistered land. Therefore, when there is a conveyance that happens or a sale or a transfer of land, this process of registration automatically takes place. So, for instance, when the land is sold, mortgaged or transferred, the registration process is triggered. Now, there are several types of rights that affect land. We considered earlier that proprietary rights can exist either as estates or interests. Now, in the context of unregistered land, the title or the ownership of the land itself is found in old-fashioned title deeds, whereas in registered land, you can find it in the land registry. In terms of other interests in land, which means the rights that others will enjoy over your land, you can find those in terms of unregistered land within the Land Charges Registry, which is established under the Land Charges Act of 1972, something we looked at in the previous lesson. Now, by registering a person's interests within the Land Charges Registry, it provides notice or it is considered to give notice to the entire world. Now, there are several subsisting rules in relation to unregistered land. Firstly, and we touched on this very briefly in the previous lesson, legal rights, whatever they might be in relation to unregistered land, binds everyone. If it is a legal right, there is no recourse. Everyone is bound by it. However, in terms of equitable rights, it must be either, one, registered in the land charges registry, two, overreachable or overreached, or there must be a subsisting doctrine of notice applicable. Now, mind you, there are some rights which cannot be registered under the land charges register, hence why equitable rights exist as an overreachable right or a doctrine of notice as well. So, these rights which cannot be registered within the land charges register can be or may be overreached. So, rights not registered, which may be included in the purchase price, can be swept off. But this only applies to a right which can be of monetary value, which means it can't be something that you can't tangibly have consideration for or some sort of monetary significance to. This itself is governed by Section 2 of the Law of Property Act of 19. 25. Now, this is a very important act as mentioned in the previous lesson, so make sure you make a note of it. It will start appearing in all its glory in various uh, lectures or various lessons within this course as well. Now, we need to look at how exactly this concept of overreaching occurs. Now, remember, overreaching is where it cannot be registered in the land charges registry and it is in fact an equitable right. So, firstly, it must be capable of being overreached as per Section 2 of the Law of Property Act or LPA 1925. If this is the case, then Step 2 applies, which is if it is made under an overreachable situation, as in a court order or a trust, then it is applicable. If it is not overreachable, then the doctrine of notice will apply. Now, considering this fact, think about where an equitable right becomes subsisting. It must be either registered in the land charges registry. If not the case, then it must be overreached. Where that is also not applicable, there must be some form of doctrine of notice. So in this case, where it's not overreachable, the doctrine of notice applies. Now before we go on proper to land charges registration, let's just briefly look at where this is applicable. So in the case of land charges, the registration actually happens or actually occurs against the name of the estate owner and not the actual land itself. So consider the proprietary rights and the definition for it that we discussed during the introduction. 
A proprietary right is something that attaches to the land and not the owner, thereby making it not personal. Now, conversely here, we are discussing a land charge as being registered against the name of the estate owner, a person, rather than the land itself. Now, there are several rules which govern this, which we will go into in depth in the next lesson. But for the purposes of this particular lesson, it must look back at 15 years or the history of the land within 15 years. And there is a 15 day window to purchase after the search is done, where there are no charges which are registered. There are several types of registrable land charges as well. These affect the land, they are not overreachable, as well as they are equitable. Now remember, there are three forms of which an equitable right can be subsisting in relation to unregistered land, either as a land charge, an overreachable right, or by way of doctrine of notice. So we, at the outset, have been talking about in relation to land charges is something which affects the land, obviously, and not overreachable, and it's in fact equitable. In the next lesson, we will look more broadly in relation to land charges registration. Thank you for watching this video. If you want to learn more and check out some of my other videos, click on the links on screen now. If you want access to the full courses, which includes spider graphs and case summaries, check out the description below. See you in the next lesson.